Hi, I'm Jack Ansel, and welcome to the Embedded Muse video blog, which is a companion to my Embedded Muse free e-newsletter. Today we're going to do a very short review of the new Zero Plus Logic Cube Pro Logic Analyzer. Zero Plus is a Taiwanese-based instrumentation company, and I've reviewed several of their products before. You can find those reviews on my website at ganzel.com. Like most logic analyzers today, this has a USB connection to the PC where the PC provides the user interface. It's Windows only, so you <laughs> Linux and Mac users will have to run some kind of an emulator. But this is not your average logic analyzer. Yeah, it's been on the pricey side, but it provides features that are really unmatched in any other USB logic analyzer that I've looked at. They come in four models ranging from 16 channels with 65 million samples per channel and 1 gigahertz sample rate, that's about $900, all the way up to this unit, which is 32 channels, 256 mega samples at 2 gigahertz. The packaging is just gorgeous. It comes in this hard case with all the little clips and probes and everything you need, and it's very well protected, so if you're traveling, it's a great way to go. Okay, so let's look at the user interface. It's pretty intuitive. Everything you need to see is right there on the screen. If you look over to the right, you see you can control the sample depth very simply, the timing easily, either by uh, using the knob or, of course, you can use the uh, pull-down menu. You can set the trigger position any anywhere you want it. But let's take an acquisition and see what we see. I just press the capture button and it's sucking the data in and there we have it. I'm driving uh, four or five channels here from a little piece of test equipment I came up with. Um, if you scroll the mouse scroll wheel it moves back and forth which is not my preferred way of doing it. I would prefer that this sets the zoom but that's just a personal preference. I can press a button over here to zoom out and you can see the data is being acquired. Timing data, as you can see here, time between pulses, the width of pulses is all given. Like with most logic analyzers, you get your various trigger conditions, delta triggers, or delta cursors, and all the like. Like most logic analyzers, you can label the channel names, you can create buses and things of that nature. Uh, I won't go through that because there's nothing really new there. When I start a capture, you can see the trace data uploads pretty quickly. Got a display there. Here is the entire data acquired window. So you can see, you know, the entire, in this case, 64K samples that I've acquired. As I zoom out, clicking in the right for right hand corner, you can see the data, of course, becomes more compressed here as we see more of the captured data and the window that's displayed in the upper half, of course, is summarized down here. The thing is a phenomenal number of triggering modes, and triggering, of course, is one of the most important things that you're going to get with a logic analyzer. For instance, here you can see that there's, of the 32 inputs on this particular model of the logic analyzer, those are broken up into four individual ports, eight channels per port. You can set the threshold voltage for each port down to a 10 millivolt resolution. And this can go down anywhere between minus six volts and plus six volts, which is pretty, pretty remarkable. If you're using an ECL logic or differential signaling, that could be really important. Here's the uh, main trigger menu. This waveform trigger looks really interesting, but the manual is pretty silent to how it works, and I couldn't figure it out. I suspect it's pretty powerful. The, the usual triggers you'll have, of course, so you can trigger on rising edges, falling edges, either edges, all, all the usual things. What's really interesting is this pattern trigger. Now, pattern triggers are pretty common with most logic, most logic analyzers, but this carries it to an extreme. If I select channel zero, and I say maybe on a rising edge, and then I'll say, well, uh, what happens after that? I'll add another channel. 
And now this has to happen, what I just set up with channel zero. For the next condition for the pattern, I'll put in O oh, channel two, make it a, a, a falling edge. Okay, I can set the condition that's going to uh, cause the trigger to happen. And here's pattern one, here's pattern two. So pattern one has to be satisfied, then pattern two before the uh, uh, logic analyzer is triggered. I can carry this out until I'm blue in the face. Look at this, we're up to seven. I get tired of doing this after I put in 64 different sequential patterns. I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that it will support up to 256. In other words, you can put in 256 conditions, each of which must be satisfied in succession. And you can have things like delays and whatnot between each of these events before the logic analyzer is triggered. That is pretty remarkable. You can trigger on hold times, delay times. It's all done very graphically. It's beautiful. The logic analyzer comes with over a hundred built-in protocol decoders, far more than I've seen on any other logic analyzer. And they're very easy to use. One of the most popular, of course, is I squared C. I'll set that up. I can set up which channel is the data and which channel is the clock. I'll go ahead and continue with the setup. Now I have the protocol uh, for I squared C on this part on the logic analyzer display. I can trigger on that. And the triggering is just beautiful. So I say, yes, I want to turn it on. I'll say the address, you know, start on an N address, whatever I might want to type in. I can add a read or a write condition after it. Maybe I require an ACK. Maybe I don't require an, an ACK. But you can see what happens is that as you set up your I squared C, and this works for all the other protocols that they decode, you get a very graphical view of how it works. One of the things that really differentiates this logic analyzer from a lot of the cheaper units are some of the subtle f features like that pattern triggering that I showed as well as some other things. For example, you can actually filter noise events from the acquisition. I'll go to the noise filter, select a channel, oops, activate it, select a channel, include that there, and now I can set what the uh, what length of event will be ignored what is counted as noise. Very useful feature in some uh, applications where you're really trying to qualify the data that you're acquiring. The unit also has a pattern generator. It takes f files from Excel and it will generate up to four bits worth of pattern coming out. Uh, it was a little bit vague from the manual as to how you actually use that. I did find that canceling a very long acquisition will sometimes result in the software waiting a very long time before it actually responds to the cancel command. This logic analyzer is June 2020's free giveaway from my website, cancel.com. If you miss that, there's a giveaway of all kinds of different instruments and other things every month. So feel free to join the contest and maybe you can win. Thanks for watching and don't forget to go to cancel.com for more videos and over 1,500 pages of articles about building embedded systems.